All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out to begin the funeral service. We ask for those that have a cell phone, a pager, if you could turn into the silent mode. Officiating is Rabbi Meir Chai Ben Chiyun. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna do this not in a. You wanna sing? Okay, Mother Rafa. Okay. 
Does anybody want to fold it before we begin? I don't know, I've sung some pages different ways. Hey, cool. Yeah, yeah, um, I know. Yeah, there's, uh, I just want to kind of gear everybody, even though the Glazers are VIPs in, in uh, Chicago, but I think the connection is more like a family. You know, I had to stand with my back to Albert. Can we send this? So let's do this like family-like. He's here. Okay, great. So we were waiting for one of the grandsons. And, uh, yeah, when I say family, it's true because uh, the only reason we are here is because of something that happened uh, in 1987, at the end of 1987. That's like 36 years ago. When somebody walked in and he said that... Uh, he had nothing to do with Judaism, but these important rabbis, I'm giving them the back. Anyways, my back is better than my front, as Rebashi Shasantin said. It's a group, have a smile, hang on. It's a living event. It's a living event. Everybody thinks, oh, he may be there. He's not there. That's the body. And the Shama is over there. So don't look there so much, because it's, uh, it's more earthy. Look at the heavens, that's where your father is now. And so happy to see the family, the grandchildren, and the three stooges? No, the three, the three brothers, amazing guys. And of course, uh, our dear Esther Helen Hasha. Did I have it right? Esther Helen Hasha, right? the wife of Albert Bernard of 75 years. This is such a milestone. They, they celebrated October, last October, 75 years. And it was recognized even by the president and the governor of Illinois. So it is a VIP situation, but frankly, and all the rabbis will attest to it, it's, it's really a family. And, our uh, dear Pesach walked in, he, something drew him there, he wanted to learn about the spiritual, you know, that's, that's when he thought that spiritual is the way to get high. But then he found out shortly, and, and we, we used to joke, Rabbi Shimon and I, that his name is Pesach, so he used to leap. Like Pesach means to leap. And he said he wanted to say Kaddish for her parrots. For Avram Bear. So, for who? You wanted to say Kaddish, and you asked Rabbi Shusterman. Oh, for Yehuda. Okay, Yehuda. So it's like a couple of generations. Is it the one that said Shema Israel and kicked? The other. Oh, from your mother's side. Okay, you know. There's so many grandfathers that get mixed up. But, um,. But it, it's a legendary story. It's a family that goes really all the way back. It was an, a Frum family. And Avram Ber, Ben Peretz, knew Yiddish, spoke Yiddish. Yeah, and older he got, he spoke more Yiddish. And, um, and it was beautiful. I asked Rabbi Shusterman of Lava Shalom at that time, can someone who has both parents say Kaddish? But the, the reason I'm telling you the story it was so important because when Rabbi Shusterman said, yeah, with the permission of the parents, and they said yes, that basically was the tactical, technical reason for which Pesach Glazer entered Chabad. But then it was a little bit more than, than what he expected. So, we're going to start the service with the famous psalm that everybody knows
So, Mizmor le David, a psalm by David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And this has to do also with the soul, not just the mourner. When my father passed away, I said this psalm so many times. He revives my soul. He directs me in the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. And even if I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod, your staff, they will comfort me. You will prepare a table before my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup is full. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of Hashem for many long years. And again, as I said, it's uh, both for the deceased, King David. And um, we basically <coughs> are here to say goodbye from this world, but not goodbye. It's not a real goodbye. Because, again, as I emphasize, what is here is the body and part of the soul. Uh, but the main part of the soul is in its departure now to the high heavens. Somebody with, who was blessed with an, uh, to see great-grandchildren lived 97 years, must have had enormous merits to live such a long life. And I can tell you, I met uh, Albert and uh, Esther Helen. I met them and the boys when Albert was younger than Pesach today. <laughs> and uh, it's an amazing family. And I think this is the moment that I, I understand you were not given the opportunity. You don't have to get up and maybe you would do it later. This is also the moment for anyone, not just the children or grandchildren, to it's a very auspicious moment to ask to settle with Avram Ber Ben Peretz. Somebody needs to discuss something. Could be could be a, a friend. Need to fix something. Needs to forgive something. Needs to be forgiven about something. There is here more than ten, than a million good good people good souls and and that helps that's that's what the Torah says if you need to fix something with somebody who passed away you can see other places like our neighbors the Arabs they say illifat mat whatever passed is gone it's good maybe for psychology but Judaism believes that we can fix the past that's really that's really a the basis of, of tshuva and Judaism. So at some moment, you can do it from where you are. I think it's a very important thing. It's an opportunity. You have the koyach, the strength of the Shekhinah being here to, to talk to him. Okay, we, we don't want to do this like a perfunctory act. This is a emotional special moment. The boys tore their shirts near the heart. And when it's apparent, it has to be the, the whatever the person the, the son is wearing closest to his skin and near the heart so that there is a fixation there is a closure eventually at the end of the shiva as well but i strongly encourage that you know if you had an argument with your dad uh, like 50 years ago it's time to say something or somebody else it's a good thing to do. I heard you weren't told to do it. And I know the, the guys love it. So I'm gonna say also something in Hebrew, okay? If you don't mind, some people here don't understand English. We can't discriminate, right? Are you the son of Frank? Oh man, you got beautiful kids. I saw your sister, but she was wearing those dark glasses, you know. She has the glazer's blue eyes probably. 
מכתם לדוד שמרני ידי חסיסי ואוה אמר לו דינו ידי נתתי ועשי בלא נכון עם נשים אשר בארץ הם עבדי לכל חפצי במי ירבו עצו עיסא ואחר מר ואל עשו מנתקיהם מידם ואל עשו שמי סם ואל שפה עשה יד מן השחלקי וחסיד זם כמרא לי חבל אם נפלו לי בנוי מי נחלו שפרו עלי וברך עשו דינו אשר עצו אני יבדיל לא יסיסרו נכין יסא שיבי עשי אדוני דינו די סמיר כי מי מי אני בעל אמות לכן צמח לי בבדיל כבד יהי יום שנשכנו בטח כי לא צעזוב נפשי לי לא אשחס עשי תן חסיד חלי לשחס עדי אני ארוך חיים סייב אז מחזיר פניך It's the month of Nisan, so there's a whole bunch of things that are omitted, but affected by the, the special virtue of this month, which is the month of the Exodus. And especially today is a very special day. It's, it's the, the eve of the 28th of Nisan. So in Israel, it's already the 28th of Nisan, where they are celebrating Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust Day Memorial. Right now, as we speak in uh, Hungary, there is the, the March of the Living. Um, this is also the day that Buchenwald was freed by the U.S. Army and a lot of famous people were in that in that camp including the chief rabbi of Israel Rabbi Israel Meir Lau including Eli Wiesel and a whole bunch of other things so it's a, it's a successful day and it connects very much with the historic day in 1990 when the Rebbe on the 20th of Nisan this night today where he said it's over. We, we have to bring Mashiach, we have to bring the redemption, we have to cause the revival of the dead, and everybody should do whatever they can. Time, according to metaphysics, and for sure according to Torah, is a funny kind of a thing. So if the Rebbe said that in 1990, that doesn't mean, he didn't mean the actions of Pesach and of Chuck and of Frank in 1988 and 1987, especially 88, when suddenly the temperatures of January went up to 50 or 54 degrees at the wedding right there at, uh, what do you call that park? Grant. Grant Park. So I'd like, I think, to ask before we continue, well, we'll say in English, it's questionable if you can say it in Hebrew. The Kel Malir Rachamim. So, with your permission. O oh God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, grant a true rest upon the wings of the Shechina, the divine presence, in the exalted spheres of the holy and pure, who shine as the resplendence of the firmament. To the soul of Avram Ber Ben Peretz, Albert Bernard, son of Percy, who has gone to his supernal world. That's what I'm saying. Look there. Don't look here. For charity has been donated in his remembrance and prayers as well. May his place of place of rest be in Gan Eden, otherwise called paradise. Therefore, may the All-Merciful One shelter him with the cover of his wings forever and bind his soul in the bond of life. The Lord, Hashem, God is his heritage. May he rest in his resting place in peace. And let us say, Amen. So, when the Torah is given, it says that Hashem gave the Torah first to the children and then to the women and only then to the rest of the Jewish people. So therefore, I don't think the children need any kind of warm up or inspiration. I'd like to ask one of the grandchildren to be the first 
No? You have somebody? You prepped, I think, your son. Oh, there you go. <coughs> to say something about Grandpa, huh? Yeah. Good guy. Um, uh, hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Matthew. I'm one of uh, Grandpa Albert's many many grandchildren I, I hope you guys can can hear me um you know this uh his passing was very unfortunate um but it's been very hard on myself and i know my my father but um you know i was think i was thinking you know what what should i say when i uh come up and, and stand here today and i i figured you know why why not talk about uh grandpa's personality a bit um, our, you know, us Glazer men are known for our uh, stubborn tunnel world uh, visions. And um, one thing I appreciated about Grandpa was, um, you know, he always did an amazing job uh, managing my tunnel vision and my, my father's tunnel vision. And, uh, you know, we, we, you know, to this date, sometimes we get into these heated debates and um, reg whether regarding politics or family matters or, you know, uh, even who's going to carve the turkey at Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, gr Grandpa always had uh, this uh, humorous temperament around him that uh, just put people at ease. And um, I really appreciated that. I think Grandma, you really loved that about him. And, um, you know, we, we cared for him you know very deeply uh, I didn't have much much time to, to put my words together but I did also want to say some found memories I had of him uh, the last time I spoke with grandpa was on January 7th when me and uh, my lovely life wife uh, Chloe got married he spoke to us on our wedding day and I have uh, you know my father uncle Chuck and uncle Pesach especially thank you for helping coordinate that phone call on that day because that was the last time that we got to speak with him and it, it meant the world to us and he got to congratulate us on our our marriage and um and then just lastly i wanted to say that one thing we we i think we all appreciated about grandpa was that he was an amazing listener and um anytime you know one of us you know myself um you know sarah uh my sister or any of um Pesach's kids, all the grandkids would come to visit. He'd want to hear about anything, uh, you know, that we had going on in our life and, and would just sit there uh, with his ears open and, uh, and firmly just listen, nod his head. And, um, it, it, you know, with a regard of respect uh, for each and, and every, every one of us and what we had going on and, ha and still have going on in our lives. So Grandpa... Um, I, you know, I thank you for that. I, I miss you. I, I, I can't really keep speaking now because I'm, I'm going to start tearing up. But I, I'm honored that I was allowed to and asked to speak here today. And, and we, we all love you very much. Hey, Anyone from the granddaughters? Granddaughters? There you go. Where is your granddaughter? Oh, no, you're good, you're good. Please. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Matt's sister and Frank's daughter. I'll just say something brief. I don't, I didn't really prepare anything. Um, but, you know, in, in the time leading up to my grandfather's passing, um, he would call my father every day, uh, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, and I feel like my grandpa had a very special relationship with, with each of his sons. Um, and sorry, <laughs> um, he was just a very special person um, a very funny person who he could really command a room. Not, not many people could do that, but, but grandpa was very good at commanding a room. Um, and he took very good care of my grandmother and cared for her very much. And I'm, I'm grateful that 
that she had him in her life. Um, and yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. I love you, Grandpa. I would love to have also the devoted wife of, uh, of Rambert, of Albert Bernard, who, thank God, was able to come here. Thank you, Chuck, for making sure she's here. So, Esther, over here. When, uh, no, she doesn't have to come here. We can bring the... But I, I just don't want to surprise her. Maybe she can prepare something. I'm, I'm going to say something before that so she's ready. Can you ready her? So, for whoever doesn't know, and it's important, even though it's not necessarily a eulogy, because it's uh, the month of Nissan, month of miracle, month of light, so all of that is... Uh, added by the uh, virtue of the day. You know, such a beautiful day, spring. At this time, yesterday there was a storm. So thank God there's not even any slush. Um, and I think it has to do with uh, the personality of, of uh, Albert and it's important to speak about his personality. As I said before, this is not some kind of a formal event. This is very personal very personal it should be personal as a matter of fact it says a rabbi that doesn't talk from personal knowledge of the person should not officiate you can't just talk kind of out of your head or just information you have to have some emotional connection to the person it doesn't mean you can't perform funeral for someone else but you got to learn them so since there's a lot of people here that uh, love the, fam the Glazer family, a lot of my esteemed colleagues and um, Avram Baer was born in 1926. You know, that's uh, quite a long time ago. He had a law degree from one of the universities where now there is crazy anti-Semitism going on, Harvard. Oh, no, no, that's BU, but uh, he, he had an MBA from Harvard, which as a good smart Jew, he used it for business, not for spending time uh, in other, you know, legal or, but he, he was the treasurer of a big company. That's why when you said that he commanded a room, somebody said, you said, I think, that when he walks in, yeah, he was the boss. He was the, the treasurer of a big company and when I asked uh, Peretz, uh, Peretz, Pesach, always confused, what did he exactly do? Because m my knowledge of, of your father's, your father was, it's an anecdote for I guess all the rabbis here, it was when we were about to sign the pre-marital pre, pre, uh, contract, the Hebrew, the Jewish one, the Tanaim, there was no other kind of contract, just the Jewish contracts, but one of them is called the Tanaim and the other one, the Ksuba. And we were in Chabad of the Loop downtown, this is 1980, 1990. 1990, Sarah and, and Pesach met at, uh, at, our, at our home in Parkside. And then uh, the, it was exactly the Shabbos that we were flying to New York with the big group. I think even Rabbi Shusterman was, was there in that group. And they passed by the Rebbe and somehow at that trip, they decided to get married, wrote to the Rebbe right before going to the airport, got an answer, wrote a letter to the Rebbe right there from the hotel room. So the anecdote, it's very telling. You know, it's a kind of, a, usually it's just a traditional thing. We sit and people sign or put their names down. So Mr. Glazer would not put his name down or sign anything until he looks at me and he says, uh, very like, later on I found out that's called a poker face. Very like uh, poker face. At that time, I didn't, I didn't know what it was. That's exactly what a poker face is. You know, I just, he looks at me and he says, uh, I can't sign this, um, I need to, a translation of it. 
translation of the Tenoyim, translation of the Ksuba, <laughs> and we're like a couple hours before the Chuppah. What am I, what am I going to translate this? How can you, it's Aramaic, it's archaic, and it, it has the force of, uh, of custom, especially the Tenoyim, which he wanted the translation. It is a legal document, so when we said it's a Neither Pesach nor I remember how we crossed that impasse. I probably took him to the side and I gave him a short translation and I think he believed what he was told and he agreed. But that's, that's the kind of a person I think he is because he was, I was surprised because I couldn't uh, really interpret his, um, how his face was and I said very gently, when I was talking to Pesach, I said, uh, it looks like a poker face. He says he, he had a poker face. He was the greatest in negotiations. And apparently, he told Pesach at, at that much that he had, a, he had the system that uh, Trump learned from him, which is called the shut, close, close the briefcase shut. You know, you got to... What do you call it? Track. Uh, you gotta clamp the, the the briefcase. Get up. If you <laughs> you have to be serious about leaving, and that's how you would do it. Close the briefcase shut. That's a cool uh, thing to remember about a man who was very unassuming, but was strong. Was very strong. I just want to say that you know to be married to a, a woman for seventy five years. Is, is amazing thing and we want to wish Esther, Helen, Hasha a very long life. You gotta pass him. You gotta get to 100, 120. And you kids have to make sure she does. You gotta make her happy, okay? She asks, where are the kids? And it's an amazing family. The Blazers have this issue, it's all boys. And every once in a while there's a little, some girl comes out. <laughs> So it's really great to have here Pesach, Frank, Chuck, their wives. Albert had nine grandchildren and five, has, has nine grand, grandchildren and five great grandchildren. Another thing to note is that Al, Albert and Esther, of Rambert and Esther, came from observant homes. The, the one who came here first was uh, Peretz in 1912 or so, early 1900s, to escape uh, military compulsory recruitment, Russian. And I think that was an amazing step. And I guess, again, I just I think very important to remember the, the, our, our, the, the Hatufim and the Hatufot, the hostages that we have in Gaza. And, and the Shoah, which today is the day of the Holocaust Remembrance. And uh, Shoah and what happened October 7th, are, it's different, but a lot of similar things. And to think that this is the day that great grandparents and families from Europe, because they came from Russia, right? Parents came from Russia, were basically lost. It's like a lost uh, people that from the Shoah. But now there is the march of the living, you know, to 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 ghetto Vasha, to yeah, to um, that's being done right now. Um, and that this is the day that Buchenwald was freed, the twenty eighth of Nissan. What I understand is family life was very important and something that's going to sound very strange to us these days is that the family had dinner every day together at 6 p.m. Man, who's doing that these days? But that's how the family was and they went to family vacations to beautiful places near Boston, uh, Cape Cod and and had a lot of good fun there. But overall, when I hear that Esther, who is clearly an amazing woman, the way she was described to me, and what I saw 
through the different simchas and through the years, she was devoted to her husband. And at that time, the families were more patriarchal. So the, the wife was at home and she was the, the, uh, she, she, she was the one that's holding the home together for him and, and for the boys. So I think it is not a small achievement to actually raise a family and provide the family for all these years and each one of you through college. You know, I think it's something that we have to, to recognize and he did that with hard work. And sometimes maybe what was mentioned here as far as him being uh, sometimes tunnel vision, sometimes the capacity of the person really, really what a person means is responsibility and accountability because he loves what he does. But depending on the personality, so it turns into tunnel vision. So you may come on sometimes tough, but it's not, it's not toughness. It's just, he doesn't know another way to say how much I love you. And therefore I'm going to make things happen and make sure they happen. And to carry three boys through college, it's not something that, uh, you know, we can just ignore. So I would say responsibility, accountability. I think a good man left this world sated of days, which is a big thing in Torah and with a good name, which is another huge thing in Torah, Shem Tov, Niftar B'Shem Tov, with a good name. And to conclude, at, at closer to the, to the, the, uh, the winter of his days, interacted with Pesach, And uh, I think two weeks before Pesach went to visit and he told Pesach, and that shows you the greatness of your dad. He said, Pesach, I think the train is leaving the station. Was that the right quote? Because it's funny because it the, way, the way I wrote it is the train is going, is getting to the station. But I think the actual quote is that the train is leaving the station, which obviously it was his way to tell him and then a day later and so on, after some hints that Pesach gave him, he himself asked to do the final prayers for the Jew makes before they pass away, before a Jew passes away. And Pesach said, offered, maybe I'll read it for you. He says he hates people to read for him things. But eventually he did ask Pesach to read for him. But what's more important is the last communication between Pesach and his father. And it's all a result of walking into a Chabad house in 1987. And then suddenly, because of the holiness of this amazing family, and people translate holiness into all sorts of things. But take it from me, I'm a linguist. It has nothing to do with what people think it is. Right now, there's a lot of holiness. You see these beautiful faces? Maybe some of people here didn't say Modeani in the morning. Maybe they didn't do this or that. It's not about that. You can do all those things and be obnoxious. I don't see one obnoxious person here. Beautiful people. And I want you to really connect to this man who is the, really the, the one who started this dynasty in America, Peretz and him. But apparently the last communication, the last words, and I think it's uncanny. As I said to you, uh, Daniel, what's your name? Matthew. What's the Hebrew name? Yeah, cool. That tunnel vision. It's not tunnel vision, it's care, responsibility, and love, but he doesn't know how to say it other way. He's just, this was his capacity to, some people don't know how to say I love you, but they love you and they translate it through action. And as the Rebbe said, probably a billion times, 
Action is the main thing. And I want to tell you, as I told uh, the boys, he loved you guys, cared for you, sacrificed maybe his perception by you, but that was his capacity as far as expression. But it's, it's not how it's translated in action. In action, he made sure you guys are all 100% and he agreed to live in this crazy world 97 years to prove that. But that the last time, last moments before a person passes away, I guess the truth comes out. Even our own truth. It says every Jew, a tzaddik for sure, and he was a tzaddik the last few days before you, you really see the truth. So you know what, what he told Pesach? Apparently he called him close to his uh, ear. He says, I love you, Pesach. And Pesach answered, I love you, Dad. And that was the sum, this was the sum really of, I think, especially Pesach is the firstborn and it goes for the whole family. So you have to remember, these are the last words of your grandfather. And we all have to learn from it. If you cannot say that at the last I mean, breath, if you cannot kick the bucket with love, and say that even though sometimes you are perceived that as maybe unloving or tough. Please, please, this is the time to melt all of those, you know, little blocks, the things that we meet in life. That's part of this crazy life. But a minute before a person passes away, the truth comes out. And he expressed himself. I love you, Pesach. He didn't say I love you, whatever, the, I don't remember your English name. He said, I love you, Pesach. Why, what, these were his last words. And with that, I want to finish and say it's, it was an honor. I think the world is going to be missing. As I said, I think this is a person, a good man that passed away, sated with years, 97 years, and with a good name. And the Pirke office, which we just started yesterday, Ethics of the Fathers, say clearly, that a good name is more important even than royalty, even than scholarship or any other achievement to depart this world with a good name is a very important thing. And uh, to, th this is, this is uh, the message. Uh, one time uh, Rabbi, the, the, the judge, Abraham Lincoln, um, Abraham Lincoln, what was Ab Abraham, uh? Meirovitz, Meirovitz, he, he had a, he had these, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? The buttons for a shirt, you know, the cufflinks. And he one day, he had his father and a picture of his father around his mother. He says, why are you wearing that? He says, because I remember when we, 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 left, we left our home, Mao and Pa used to come to us and say, look, you're leaving this home with your self-respect. Return with it. That's why it's right. Baruch Atah B'Tzayisecha, Baruch Atah B'Vo'echa. We're wishing Albert a departure with 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 tremendous respect. We're done. Yeah. All yours, guys. I'll lay you guys. Okay. Uh, Thank you. That's the, the meat of the matter. Everything else. <clears throat> My brothers um, asked me to say some things, uh, make some remarks today. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it together while the proceedings are going on behind me here. Um, and uh, I made some notes. 
so I won't forget anything. First of all, I have some disclaimers. Um, our brothers asked me to represent the three of us, um, which is a very difficult proposition for me. Um, my brothers have a lot of very, very bright ideas of their own, uh, and they each have memories of my father uh, that precede me oh, sorry. and are unique to each of them. But I agreed to do it, and I'm going to endeavor uh, to be succinct. Um, <clears throat> more and more disclaimers. This is very difficult for me. I, I, I started by making some notes this morning because I didn't want to forget anything. And just like a good, a good batter, you know, you just got to ignore all the noise in the background, and I don't have a problem with that. I'm focused on the task at hand here. It's difficult for me. Making these notes was extremely emotional for me. And so I, I hope you can just pardon me if there are any imperfections or gaps in the oratory. Uh, I'm making remarks about my father, but I put asterisks next to some of them because most of what I have to say is actually about my father and my mother. And can someone be sure that mom hears me? My mother's gonna have a hard time hearing me with the dozer in the background. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna take a two, uh, pardon the interlude. Uh, it's a day of living. So I could I could sing a I could sing a song in the interlude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, back at it. Okay, thank you. Mom, can you hear me? Okay. What I was saying was, this is important, Mom. What I was saying was, Pesach and Frank asked me to talk about Dad. Some of the really great things I have to say are about Dad and you. Because my parents were always two halves of a whole. For eight, they, yes, they were married for 75 and a half years, but they were a pair for 80 years. It took a world war to separate them temporarily. They were both part of the generation that saved the world. Talk about Yom HaShoah. So thanks, Mom, and pardon me for talking so much about Dad, but I'll make a point of the asterisks on some of these comments. And then the last disclaimer is there's some order here and some disorder here, uh, and that reflects how I feel at the moment, so pardon me. Okay, first of all, what I did was, <clears throat> I didn't know quite where to start, so I thought, well, I'm going to write down words and phrases that make me feel about dad. And then things will occur to me when I read the word and the phrase, okay? So the first one was inspiration. And there's a big asterisk next to that because I got inspiration from both my mother and my father. I got different kinds of inspiration from each of them. Sometimes the same inspiration, but inspiration. And it started, the first one I remember anyway about my dad, the first inspiration, was his running. My father started running before anybody was running, unless they were running from the police. And it started when he read a book uh, written by Dr. Kenneth Cooper titled Aerobics, 
1968, and he started running in 1968. I was seven years old, and I watched my dad run down the street. People were staring at my dad, and I don't know what he was wearing on his feet at the time, but it wasn't uh, hookahs or whatever they're called. And, and it was Adidas. Okay, okay. And uh, and he, you know, he, with these strange-looking shorts, and people stared at him, but he just did it anyway. And you know. I was kind of a mediocre student throughout my life so far, although I'm a student still for life, I think. Uh, it turned out I was, wasn't a terrible athlete, and it's because of my father. Okay, so there was that. Um, <sighs> Converse. Well, eventually he became a Brooks guy. He, he wore Brooks. He ran a lot, yeah, he went through his Brooks. <clears throat> and I ran a lot too. Uh, okay, the next word is learning. Um, my father and my mother, they always said, just, just do your best. And they knew if I did my best. And like I said, I wasn't a super duper student, but I've learned a lot throughout my life and I'm still learning. Uh, I learned a lot from my father. Um, you know, he, I'll get to this in a minute, but he was the smartest man I, uh, I've ever known. And a lot of people who uh, I don't, I didn't think knew him very well say, ah, oh, he was such a smart guy. And, uh, I spoke to my, one of his first cousins the other day to let him know about my father's passing. And he said, oh, he was the smartest guy I ever knew. He was the elder statesman of the, co of the cousins. But my father, <clears throat> he helped me learn to the extent that I could. Uh, in my adult life, he helped me learn little bits and pieces of Japanese because he was fluent in Japanese. The first time I went to Japan, uh, he taught me how to say thank you three different ways because that's how the Japanese do it. Um, he, he learned a lot of Italian in about six weeks once before my parents went to Italy. He had such aptitude and he just wanted to learn Italian, so he learned Italian. And apparently he was good enough at it that when he bought this leather jacket in Italy, people started to ask him directions because they thought he was a local. Um, okay, next word is giving with a big asterisk next to it. My parents gave us so much. They each gave us different things. And I'll never forget the day I was like a I think I was a sophomore in high school. My father says to me, you can go to college anywhere you want and I'll pay. And I said, oh, wow. And I, you know, I looked into things a little bit already because uh, I didn't want to go to a division one school. I wanted to go to a division three school so I could run competitively. And I said, I want to go to Colby College. And he says, you can go to college anywhere you want except Waterville, Maine and I'll pay because <laughs> Waterville was just too far away. Uh, so I went to school in Minnesota, it turned out pretty well. Um, do your best, I already covered that one. That's got a big asterisk from, from the two of my parents. Here's one that um, both Matthew and Merchai have covered a, a little bit differently than me, but self-determined, so, sorry, self-reliance and determination and I've been working on this myself uh, with my my beautiful wife Michelle who sometimes is concerned about how self-reliant I am and and sometimes we have to discuss it because well I'm I want to be half of a whole as well But my example was self-reliance and determination. And so I like to say, I can't be stopped, only delayed. Uh, next word I would say is curiosity. My father was an extremely curious person and he always encouraged us to be curious. And uh, I wrote curiosity hyphen photography because he was a photographer, that hasn't been mentioned, and he, he was sort of a chronolo 
chronicler of things when it came to photography, but he gave us cameras and just encouraged us to be curious and creative. We had a dark room in the house. I developed my first roll of 35 millimeter film when I was like eight years old. Got a job as a photographer later, took some decent photos, married someone who takes awesome photos. So he loved photography and it was tied into a, a general spirit of enjoyment for him as well. Okay, some more specifics. Uh, and I did ask for forgiveness um, because my father and I had a dispute when I was 10 years old uh, regarding an advance against my allowance. And it was an extremely, extremely important lesson for me because he didn't know that 20 years later I'd be in the publishing business and having to explain to authors about what an advance is. But he gave me an advance on my allowance and the next week, of course, it was deducted. And I thought he was robbing me. And, and it was years and years before I had any real understanding of, of how it all worked. And, and I, I asked for forgiveness for that, any animosity there. Another extremely important thing I learned from him, look where you're going which is sage advice, you know, in, 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 in a lot of respects. The context of this one, I was in Northfield hanging out with my buddy at the radio station at New Trier West when I was supposed to be in Evanston picking up a pair of, or waiting to pick up a pair of glasses. This is when it took a long time to make glasses. Anyway, I put the car in reverse. I drove over a cement parking barrier. I ruptured the gas tank on his Volvo. I told him all about it, and he said, deal with it, click. So self, you know, self-reliance, look where you're going. Okay, one day I asked him, this is in my mid-20s, uh, uh, for some investment advice. He said, my boy, the market will fluctuate. Uh, his favorite shrub was the azalea. And we have one in the driveway. It's thriving right now, and I walked by it the other day, and it made me cry. Okay, he was the smartest person I ever knew, and uh, I'll just end. I could go on, but... Later on in the Shiva. Okay, later on in the Shiva. We've got a lot of daylight this time of year, but I'm going to conclude by just saying... The workers are already sleeping. The workers are already sleeping. All right, well, bear with me just for a few more minutes, a couple minutes... The world has lost a great intellect. Our country has lost <clears throat> one of its heroes. My family has lost its patriarch. <clears throat> and I lost my dad. But I'll never lose the inspiration he offered me and I'll always love him. And that's what I have to say. All right, what's gonna, I mean, it was after these uh, amazing words, connection, father and son. We're going to start uh, filling the grave and the way it's done. As you can see there, the way he's going to do a couple, and then he's going to put the shovel upside down. Can you demonstrate, Rabbi, one of you? Like that. And you don't pass it to the next person. After that, we the, the, the three sons are going to say Kaddish. So we're really almost done. Okay? Are we going to... Yeah. We're going to pour some... Uh, part of the earth of, of Israel, very meaningful on the Yom HaShoah.
So, um, if anybody else would like to join, not not direct descendants, if possible. But if you really want, I told uh, your fathers, you can. Sons for sure, no. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um, today they say the regular Kaddish. No, sir. No. So as, as it's being filled, we're going to continue towards the, the end of the service. Tzidduk Adin is omitted. Tzidduk Adin is basically accepting, accepting that God is just in what He's doing and if it was the time for your father to go, you accept that this is the right thing. We don't say that, huh? Yeah. We don't do the special Kaddish. Not on days of Tachon. <coughs> oh, Chabad? Huh? Yeah. It's going to be hard for them. Want them to break their teeth? Is there a dentist here? <coughs> All right. <laughs> after the Kaddish is said, which is going to be only after there is a shape of a grave after the landfill we're going to create two two rows men on one side women on the other side and we're going to try the best we can to for the first time as the shiva begin right after this uh, to console them and comfort them there is a special phrase that we say as Jews uh, that connects all of our sorrows. Well, before that we're going to say, they're going to say Kaddish as soon as this is completed. What? So that's what I, that's what I, Nitsa, no Tachlan, you said the regular mourners Kaddish, not the, the other one. Yeah. That's right. Most of easier. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So it doesn't move? Can I hold it so it doesn't move? So, to make it that way. Let's make a mine. Okay. You guys have been Hi, we'd like to ask everyone to rise. Um, Pesach, Frank, and Chuck are going to be saying Kaddish. We'd appreciate everybody to answer, to answer Amen to their Kaddish. After which, uh, we'll form two two rows, 
one row of men, one row of women, they're going to pass through and we'll do our best to console them as they are starting their Shiva. And I think uh, Simpa is going to announce where the Shiva is taking place, etc. As soon as the bulldozer stops talking, ready? Friends, as the rabbi mentioned, we're going to form two rows through which um, the immediate mourners will pass. Everybody except the immediate mourners, you can form two rows, men on one side, women on the other, and we'll say the words of comfort. We'll have the men over here. Yeah. If all the men can line up over here. If all the men can come this way, please. And we'll have the woman on the other side. Please come this way. And before we um, say the words of comfort, just to remind everybody, Shiv will be at the Glazer residence. 3038 West Columbia Avenue in Chicago. Very nice, Chuck. Should I push? It's always the youngest that remembers the mother, huh? Can I push? What are you pushing? My mother. Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I can push. Okay. Now, I'll just okay. Alright, so. Okay. Again, this is very, very auspicious. Right now, in, in the Poisel, there are prayers. In Yad Vashem, there are prayers. Everybody mentions Yerushalayim, so please. Say it in English, then in Hebrew. May the Almighty 